Hey guys, this is Justin Germino from DragonBlogger.com here, and I'm going to be showing you some slobs or Streamlab obs settings for when you have trouble with your streams. So you may notice that while you're streaming, if you look down here at your stream stats, if you see dropped frames, you see how it says percent drop frames, if you start seeing 15% or more drop frames, you'll know that your Streamlabs OBS is having trouble capturing your game or your display window, and it's dropping frames before they even get to Twitch. Or else, it could be that your Twitch upstream, your bandwidth is low, and so it's losing frames and it's having stream issues with the upstream to Twitch. I'll show you what to look at the difference, and I'll show you how to troubleshoot in some settings in your output settings and slobs to help out. The first thing I'll talk about is your slob settings and things to play around with. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make sure you go to settings. You're going to look at your stream settings, right? Make sure that when you select Twitch, if you're streaming to Twitch, you select the closest server, either order recommend. But I do order recommend, and since I'm in San Diego, it often recommends me to go to uh, Los Angeles stream servers. But I find that sometimes going to Phoenix is actually more stable. So look at your server in Twitch. That could be a potential issue. If you notice when you use Twitch Inspector, if you start seeing uh, frame rate drops or you start seeing issues with your stream, try changing your your uh, your server that Twitch and then see if that helps out. That's particularly if you see frame rate drops um, and all else looks good. You know you have good up up bandwidth, upstream bandwidth. The other thing is make sure you have a minimum of 5 megabits upstream bandwidth. You're going to want at least 10 megabits upstream bandwidth if you want to stream 1080p, 5 megabits upstream bandwidth if you want to stream 720p, and you can control that and tailor your upstream bandwidth and your quality to kind of help in the medium if you're on the lower end of the bandwidth. You click on output, you change from simple, which gives you very few options when you're on simple, to advanced. Right away just go to advanced. You don't need to be in simple. So here you're going to want to look at your encoder. If you're using an NVIDIA graphics card, you're almost certainly going to want to use NV Ink. Now, I've seen a lot of people with problems with NV Ink new, although it can be faster um, and better rendering when writing to disk. Typically, I've found better performance with NV Ink, not NV Ink new. So for this purposes, if you're going to test them all, this is going to be your biggest thing when the game is actually recording and Slobs is recording your game and capturing your frames. This is something that's going to cause an issue before you even get to the upstream, you're going to want to look at the performance settings here. So let's do NV Inc. for this purpose. You're going to want to enforce streaming service encoder settings. If you need to, let's say you want to stream lower quality, you're playing the game in 4K, or you're playing the game in 1080p, but you want to stream in 720p, you can rescale the output to 720p. That way, you don't have to worry about sending the out, your, your game too much data, you know, resolution of your game to the stream, you can keep it down. The other thing, too, is to control the bitrate. You do want to have CBR, typically. Um, the bitrate is going to be based on how much data you want to put in the upstream pipe and the quality of it. If you want to stream in 1080p 60, you're going to want to have at least 5,000 on the bitrate, at least. Sometimes higher, sometimes, you know, it all depends. If you ever want to stream in 4K, you're definitely going to need a lot more bitrate than that. Bitrate should correspond pretty close to your megabit upload speed. Let's say you have 5 megabit upload. I don't, you don't want to use you want to use around 60 percent so you're going to want to put about 4,000 bit rate and you probably should get 1080p 30 okay out of that now depending on your bit rate twitch will automatically set the max resolution that a viewer can watch at depending on bit rate so if you want to stream in 720p you don't have a great upload speed 2500 usually is pretty good for 720p that's generally when you want a starting point if you're having performance issues unless you have a really really good um, at least 25 megabit up pipe you want to kind of start that's like your low end of the spectrum Keyframe interval. So zero is auto, but a lot of people say they get better performance if you put keyframe interval to two. So that's something you can try if you're having uh, performance settings. The other thing is max B frames. B frames has to do with how many frames before and after what it's recording and streaming are, are captured and replayed. So um, you want to have that at least two. Um, that could be something you play with as well. Preset quality. Uh, preset is something that is just general for the type of stream I do. Do you want max quality? This is if you want the highest resolution possible, the best looking video. Again, you have to have the, the best um, CPU, GPU, upstream bandwidth. Then you could start going with the higher quality. If you want to look at, okay, I don't have very good bandwidth to Twitch. You know, I'm dropping frames. Then you're going to start looking at the lower latency quality or lower latency performance. Performance is when you don't have a strong GPU, CPU, and you're generally having some struggles with uh, frame rate drop in slobs itself. 
or FPS issues with the game. So then you're going to want to do performance or max performance. And if you're having trouble with your upstream as well, then you're going to want low latency performance. That's generally, you know, let's say you have like the worst low end quality of stream. You know, you're really barely making it. You know, with your CPU, your GPU, and your and your uh, Twitch streaming, low latency performance is going to be give you about the best profile you can get. You know, for quality there. I typically like using, um, you know, performance is what I generally use myself when I stream, unless my broadband is having some serious issues. So, those are some settings you can look at in slobs for your output. Again, you have separate settings for recording as you do for streaming. It's always a really good idea to test your video and record to your disc first. Make sure that the game's capturing, it's not skipping frames, Make see how it looks then. Then you can kind of like match, because you could probably do a lot higher quality recording to your disc than you can to your stream. So set your bit rate, set your recording settings, and then from there, when you get your recording settings looking good, see if you can match when you stream. If your stream has issues, then start scaling stuff down and just keep doing experiments until you get to where you want to get to. So in this case, you'll notice that it defaults to 15,000 for a disc recording bit rate, which, you know, is obviously pretty good uh, for recording. You can record 4K just fine video. So those are generally what the uh, things you want to look at. Again, in the video here, this is going to be for your output to re video recordings. This is not going to be um, for your streaming. That's just going to be for when you record to your recordings. So those are some settings you can look at to try to tweak your Streamlabs OBS to have more stable streams. Again, you want to look and make sure that you have 0% drop frames here. Right, you want to, and your 60 FPS is going to be pretty much locked. You know, it doesn't matter if you um, play in 100, you know, hertz games or 144 FPS or whatever, because ultimately you're going to be streaming in 60, you know, FPS. So you don't really need above 60 hertz. Uh, so you could do FPS lock on your game to keep it on the lower end if you need to as well. Figure you're going to want at least you know, 30 FPS to the stream, possibly 60. So if you uh, have 120 FPS, that could be 60 for your you know, your gameplay and then 60 for the stream, things like that. So you want to keep it, keep that in mind and not overdo your settings because obviously your stream is not going to be looking as high quality as your game may be rendering and displaying for you. So you can adjust it accordingly to make sure you're using your, your bandwidth and your performance uh, to your advantage when you're doing streaming. So those are just some tips there. The other thing you might want to look at is on your stream, if you go to your Twitch dashboard, you're going to see something called Twitch Inspector. <clears throat> so, Twitch Inspector is where you look at the quality of your stream to see if there's any loss coming from your upload or your upstream bandwidth. This usually means that the stream server is having problems with your, you know, your data you're sending to the server, your game that you're streaming to the server. If you see problems here, like you see there's um, one unstable event, and that's not too bad, you know, that's the duration of this unstable event. If you see unstable events, that's definitely going to be a problem with your upstream bandwidth, probably your I either your ISP, not enough broadband, or something wrong with your output settings to your stream in the server. That's where you're going to want to try different Twitch servers if you know you have a good upstream and things like that. You can see I have some various um, 1.7 minutes, 37 seconds, you know, some past streams. I've got a bunch of different people who stream from various uh, servers, so some of them have um, events. But if everything looks good here, like you see no unstable events here, but you see lossless, um, you know, you see drop frames in your actual slobs, that typically means it isn't the Twitch server that's having trouble receiving the frames. It means there's a problem with slobs receiving the frames from recording the game capture, and that's where you're going to want to tune down and, and you know what those settings for the performance so hopefully that tutorial helps that's a little bit on performance tuning and experimenting with streamlabs obs to try to get more stable streams if you're having trouble with drop frames and you're having trouble with streams thank you for watching